Hi folks, this is Jim Dunn. I thought I'd show you my Bulova watch collection. I'm going to go through them pretty quick. This will probably be part one, but I thought it would be fun. I work on watches myself. Here's the first one. Uh, it is a 1928 Conqueror. Really cool. Love this watch. Interestingly enough, um, I accidentally had it in my pocket and washed it through the washing machine. Ended up having to uh, restore it a second time. Next one here um, actually is a Lone Eagle, 1930. Uh, anyway, this one's really cool. I love monogram or personalized watches, Jack from Eva, 1930. December 16th. Here's a really cool one. This is a really nice size, wide, white, gold filled. And this one here is a Ambassador, 1930. Dial's a little rough, but uh, I like this design quite a bit. Here's uh, Unknown. Nice condition, another white gold filled and uh, beautifully engraved on the back. Um, interestingly enough, uh, we just don't have a model name for this one. Look for it, I found one ad that shows this case design, but uh, no name. Really nice, love these watches. Here's another one, this is a Sky King. Um, yeah, 17 joule movement. Uh, Two-tone, you can see that, yellow gold and white gold. No monogram or anything on it, but nice watch. Here's another one. Uh, this one is a Lafayette. General Lafayette. A um, little discoloration on the dial, but given the age of being a 1930 and being 90 years old, Pretty good shape. Um, here's a 1930 Crusader. And these are the model years that have the dust covers on the back. So it's really interesting that movements actually have a plastic cover so that the dust would keep out. A lot of them are missing, but uh, you still, a lot of these still have. Into the 30s, um, late 30s, they start converting and yellow gold starts making its way. This is a 1936 Treasurer. No second hand. Very thin. This thing is about as thin as a dime. Watches start, start to get smaller. Here's a 1936 um, this actually is, I'm not sure. Uh, love the strap. Not sure which model this is. This might not even be a bull of a case. This might be, I think there was one in here. Yeah, this is a non bull of a case. It's just a replacement. But still, good looking watch. Um, here's a American Clipper, 1936. Yeah, a little dirty dial, but still a very nice watch. And a 1934 Lone Eagle. Oop. Like this one. Mm -hmm. Very common, very popular series of watches, the Lone Eagles. This one's in very good shape. Here's another nice one, uh, Bulova. I believe this is an American Clipper from 1936. As you can see, yellow gold making its way. Yep, nice looking watch. <clears throat> uh, the Phantom. He came with uh, three different dials and three different cases, including engraved and unengraved. You'll see in a minute, this is a 1936 or seven. 
1936, with the non-number num hour markers. And then you have the engraved with the uh, Arabic numbers, and it's also another 1936. Oh, and one of my all-time favorites here, the Montgomery. You can always tell the Montgomery they have the re recessed crown as opposed to the ambassador. I think this is another 36. Nope, 1937. Very nice. I love the way the lugs integrate with the bracelet there, original bracelet. Really cool. Gold filled. All of these watches are gold filled mostly from this period. Um, and again, another one, 1937. Um, Montgomery. Oops, 1938. Montgomery. 1938. Couple more 1938s. And this one I just picked up right here. This is called the Baritz. Um, you can tell the Baritz because no second hand. Looks like the Phantom, but the case is slightly different. A little notched lug there, and the engraving goes just to there. 1938. And. A Commodore, a Kenmore, excuse me, Ooh, 1937. These are both 1937, my mistake. 37 Kenmores. Kenmore. And this one sort of looks like Apollo, but it's got engraving. Sorry, had to do something real quick. Uh, here we have a 1938 President, kind of the Curvex design, an engraved. Pretty long, very nice. And over here we have a Minuteman. A little worn on the lugs, you can see. It's a problem with these gold-filled ones. They do wear. You can find the crowns also get very uh, dull from wearing through. Here we have a 1938 Ambassador. You notice the lug, uh, excuse me, the crown is not recessed. That's one way to find, but it's basically very similar to the Montgomery. Again, still love this design. It looks good with the leather strap too. Of course, original leather strap. Try to keep everything as original as possible. Um, and again, another one with another original bracelet, a 1939 Ambassador. Yeah. Okay. Here is a interesting, pretty rare, with a cracked crystal. I just found out the name of this one. Um, it's the Barrett, no, excuse me, the Ken Kirkwood. Kirkwood, just ID'd this through a newspaper ad. Um, a little smaller than the uh, Broadcaster and the Treasurer. Um, some of those, um, but very narrow, very small. Um, long and small, big curved to fit the wrist. But 1939 Kirkwood. Here's an unknown. This one's been driving me nuts for quite some time. It's military style. Um, it's supposed to have a center second. It's missing the mechanism. Um, but uh, fortunately, we, no one has been able to ID these or find any corresponding ads for these kind of black and gray dial military style. So these are classified as an unknown. Real tiny, about the size of a nickel, but these were actually men's watches and marketed towards military servicemen. This one here is a 1939. Um, then we get to the famous um, Senator Case, 
Uh, this one has the Roman two-tone dial. Roman numerals with gold. It's a little rough, but I still like it. Very nice. And this is when you start getting stainless steel backs. I don't know if you can see that. But this is 1940. And this is the Senator. Mm. Okie doke. Got this one here. Bulova Lone Eagle Model F or Variant F. Yep. Again, very similar to the Montgomery and some of those others, but there's slight differences. Again, original bracelet, which is really cool. And that was 1940. Here's a 1940 Minuteman. Again, long Curvex style case. This one has a stainless steel back. And most of these are 17 jewel movements. This has the famous 7AP series. Very easy to work on. So, very nice. And here's one of my favorites. Um, this is the uh, Physician, I believe, from 1940. You can see it's got the inner second hand. Um, um, for doctors to do pulse. They made many nurses' watches and men's doctors' watches during the war. Really cool. Again, a couple more 1940s. Uh, 41, excuse me. Um, this is called the cool name, Interceptor. Um, looks like the Apollo, but what makes this unique is the center second, um, the second sub-second hand, and the applied numerals that are kind of stylized. And uh, I think this case is sterling uh, with a gold plate. Um, here is a rose gold. Uh, copper dial, um, Alderman, uh, 1941. Mm, again, stainless steel back. Okay, uh, Ranger. These are very common design. You see this design case all the time. Um, yeah, Ranger with a really nice, uh, unusual expansion uh, bracelet combination. But um, I love the name on the back. I don't know if you can read that. It's hard to show. It says uh, oh, Michael Soleil. The only Michael Soleil I could find um, appears to be a race car driver. And I just wonder if by chance he won this um, watch during one of his races as in, you know, and was presented to him. So kind of cool. And then the last two watches for the 1930s and 40s case, I got a 1942 Lieutenant with a rare black dial. Love that combination with a really nice uh, kind of weird bracelet there. And then a um, another Lieutenant 1942 rose gold copper dial. And uh, yeah, stainless back. Real cool. And again, all of these watches run except, <laughs> except this one of all. It's overwound. Probably need a, got a piece of dust in there. Uh, I think it's ticking now, but uh, yeah, it needs some work. Spoke too soon. Anyway, this is the end of part one. Hope you enjoyed it. I've got four more at least, five more to go, just all the watches. That's not including the other brands I have.